ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. After a day of rest, the Reds are back at it as they welcome in the New York Mets to kick off a three game series. A pleasant good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Reds Baseball alongside our captain, the Hall of Famer, Barry Larkin. I'm John Sadak, and Lark, as the Reds meet the Mets, they will not see Max Scherzer. He was a later scratch, neck spasms. He says it'll be a few days. This is a group that has the highest payroll in baseball, lofty expectations. The offense has fizzled in the last two weeks. Well, it's not just the offense. I just mentioned the pitching as well. This is a team that has spent a lot of money. They expect to go out there and win a world championship. Look at the numbers. The starting pitching has just been a Abysmal, the ERA, they haven't been scoring runs. This is a team, as you said, that has spent a lot of money, has some big stars, Francisco Lindor, Pete Alonso, but they have yet to be able to put it together this year. For Lindor, he is delivering extra base hits at RBIs, but the average is down. He does hit the Reds well. He has had success here in Cincinnati. I think anytime as a player you're going to a new ballpark when your club is struggling, you're saying, okay, things are going to change. This is a team that, as I said, has a lot of veteran players, a lot of players that have had success. Lindor has had success. I'm sure he's looking forward to hitting in this ballpark again. For the Reds, one of their rookies, Spencer Steer, hit a bit of a rough patch after he missed three days with soreness in his knee and his quad. He had three hits on Sunday, and things have looked up of late. He's really been taking some good swings. His balance, number one, is the first thing. But I noticed as last couple of games, really flat through the zone. He's done it with the bat. He's been able to hit base hits, come up with big hits in situations. He's got a really good approach to right center, pulling the ball with the angle of his bat. This matchup will also have going head to head two of the best leadoff men in the game. We'll go to break, but we're back. Our number one hitter, Jim Day, to take a look at Jonathan India against Brandon Nimmo. And in Cincinnati, and by Skyline Chili, feeling good. It's Skyline time. New York Metropolitans in town with a couple of guys that lead it off and they've been doing some good damage on each side. We will start with Jonathan India because he has come lighter this season. We talked about that many many times but on Sunday ninth career leadoff home run he's hitting them out of the park. He's spraying it all over the yard. He's running hard. Tied for third most in Reds history, by the way, and moving up the list for those leadoff home runs. On the other side, it's Brandon Nimmo. Leads the Mets an average at 310, and they need all they can get because they have struggled offensively. Leads the team and not only average with that 310 average, but on base percentage at 407. If you dive deeper into the numbers of Brandon Nimmo, our medical mutual five star report. Most times reaching base safely in the first inning as a leadoff hitter. Cunha Jr. leading the way. Stephen Kwan there. That guy can rake. And then it's Nimmo and in India, 14 and 13. So look for those guys to try to strike early and often. It's the first of three with the Mets standing by with the lineups. The first pitch, all the play-by-play -play action. John Sadak and the Hall of Famer Barry Lark. New York took five of the six last year and decisively outscored Cincinnati in that time. The veteran leadership of Buck Showalter, his club though has stumbled. Our storylines presented by Elk and Elk, the black and blue and orange have lost four straight series, including a sweep at the hands of the Tigers. In that time, three and nine, they began their year 14 and seven. They haven't won a series since they took two of three in L.A. against the Dodgers in the middle of April. 
Red legs take the field and Nick Senzel grabs third base. He has locked down that position over the last two weeks. Yeah I think it's his most natural position defensively and I think because he feels so comfortable over there we have really seen him swing in the bat making fantastic plays and timely hits. He's playing about the best baseball I think we've seen at the big league level. Hopefully he'll be able to stay healthy and stay on the field. And he'll be supporting the pitching of Luke Weaver. Stands 0 and 2 ERA just under 8. What have you seen in Weaver? Well it's the fastball changeup. He's got a five pitch combination that he throws out there. The fastball the changeup the cutter curveball and the slider. But it's this fastball changeup combination and you know the, the few games that he's pitched here we've seen him kind of struggle early in the game or give up some runs early in the ball game. So hopefully there's an emphasis on coming up and throwing up zeros early because once he gets into the groove once he gets into a groove you can be very effective with that fastball combination or fastball changeup combination. He'll face the New York Mets lineup that has been held to two runs or less in half of their last 14. Full nine from Rally House. Nimmo followed by Francisco Lindor, Jeff McNeil, Pete Alonso, the polar bear, second most bombs in the bigs, 11 home runs. The rookie, Brett Beatty, Starling Marte's been in a funk, Daniel Vogelback, Mark Canna, and Francisco Alvarez. Oh, Nimmo to the plate. Top 10 in average in the National League, top 10 in odd base percentage. In all of the big leagues. First pitch strike as we are underway. Very pleasant 73 degrees at first pitch. Bounce to the perfectly positioned Kevin Newman. Reds defense backing up Luke Weaver, the outfield of Fairchild, Friedel, and Myers. Friedel getting the start against a left handed starter. Senzel, Newman, India Steer, and Luke Maley behind the plate. Francisco Lindor. Something to remember for this series. The Reds on the year and most defensive metrics are at or near the bottom in baseball. Loop toward left shading his eyes Fairchild. Hops up the wall and he makes the catch and foul ground. Nice play. That's a great play by Stuart Fairchild and you can see the hustle right there. Last check of the wall and goes and gets that ball. Nice job. Well, fighting that tough son that lives and left. Jeff McNeil, who has excellent bat control. Strike one. But the Reds' deficiencies largely come on the infield. Their outfield, thanks in large part to Friedel, actually rates pretty well. The Mets Lark have 39 infield hits this year. That's the fourth most in Major League Baseball. And McNeil leads that bunch with a dozen. That's the most of any individual player. Two one. He is the second hardest man in the majors to strike out this year. Only Luis Arise, who is having one of the greatest contact seasons the game has seen in a long time, strikes out less. And he goes down looking. Fastball at the knees. One, two, three for Weaver. Nick Senzel bats two for the first time since the 13th of September last year against the Pirates. 
Steer, Stevenson coming off strong days at the plate. Fairchild did a bit of a slide. Myers went deep on Sunday. Newman, Friedel, and Maley. They face the 27-year-old lefty just summoned back up from AAA in David Peterson. Six foot six lefty with four pitches. That was the heater right there. Slider change up and a curveball. India went yard to begin the game last time out on Sunday. His numbers spike at home. At Great American Ballpark, he is hitting 345, getting on base 47% of the time. That is the third highest on base percentage in home games in baseball. Swing and a miss. The Mets defense, the outfield of Canna, Nimmo, and Marte, who's had a couple of days off recently. The rookie Beatty at third, Francisco Lindor, two time gold glover, team high four defensive runs saved, McNeil, Alonzo, and the 21 year old Francisco Alvarez. Nick Senzel, contact rate has gone down a bit in the last week, but he has clubbed lefties. He is hitting 476 against lefties. OPS over 1,300. Both are top five in baseball. Three zero. Uh, just nicks the top of the zone. He also has seen Peterson. He took him deep. Crack beyond the reach of Alonzo. Extra bases. Marte after it in the corner. Sinzel sprinting up to second. A standing double. Really good hitting by here. Fastball away, and this is what Sinzel is doing so well. Normally, he hits the ball deep. We've seen catcher's interference a lot. That means, or that's an indication that he allows that ball to travel, lets that ball travel, and punches it down the right field line. Great hitting. Spencer Steer. They have the dirt, ball one. His four homers lead the team. Remember, it was Jason Vossler in the infancy of the year who had three and was later sharing that advantage for a bit. Two of those homers have come in his last four games. Senzel a gaudy lead. That had some dive to it, two and one. Chopped to short, Senzel breaks in front of the ball. Lindor on to first. Senzel takes third, two down. And now Tyler Stevenson fresh off his first home run of the season opposite way on Sunday. Tyler really been struggling 
thought he was trying to maybe pull the ball too much. He let that ball travel, and that's where the big man's power is. Senzel scores. Stevenson with comeback contact. And the Reds have a 1 0 lead. That's a base hit. Good hitting. Try to work right back up the middle. And this pitch is right over the middle of the plate, maybe a little inside. But Tyler with that patented up the middle, other way approach. Plenty strong enough to get that ball through the infield. Stewart Fairchild. Early on, Peterson has been living away to these right handed hitters. Stevenson's the only red so far to see a first pitch strike. Fairchild in a bit of a funk with irregular playing time. Oh, for his last nine, four strikeouts in that span. Alvarez out to chat. Only 21 year old catcher made his big league debut the last of September. He was the youngest man of the majors last season. Peterson was with the Mets to begin the year but pitched so poorly thanks in large part to homers. His last outing had come Thursday at Triple A against the Phillies top farm club the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Just catches the bottom of the zone. Canna has not yet been tested with that rough sun in his eyes and left. Grounded through the left side, base hit. Stevenson up to second, two on. There's your fastball on the inside part of the plate. Will Myers. He homered on Sunday also took one away with the leap at the wall. And there's another first pitch ball. The Stevenson hit by the way snapped a personal 0 for 15 slide or a Reds excuse me a team 0 for 15 slide with men in scoring position. So the team's off to a one for two start today. Reds entered with losses in five of seven. Two one. All the way to the backstop, both men move up. A grossly wild pitch, second and third. You can see that one out of the hand. It just looked like there was a misgrip on that ball. Fairchild has wheels at second, in between ball. That might tilt the scales to send him. A delayed and generous strike two. 
seeing a few balls out off the edge of the strike zone called a strike. I mean, Lark, that's as wide a zone as I've yes, seen this year. It is, I agree. And he strikes out. Reds get one as Stevenson gets him off the Schneid. One zip. Reds to offer the Kroger meal deal at the ballpark. Just $9.50 includes a hot dog, Coke, chips, and for the rest of this homestand, a Slim Jim. For tickets to an upcoming game, visit Reds.com. It's Park in the Park night, the first of the year. There's a polar bear at the plate. The nickname of Pete Alonzo, who is second in the big leagues in homers with 11. He co-leads the National League in RBIs with the Dodgers' Max Muncy. But Lark, while the power numbers are prodigious, it's the contact rate for several stars, including Alonzo, that has dropped 179 in his last 18 games. Well, they say hitting is contagious. And, you know, this is a team, as we talked about in the pregame, that has spent a lot of money to bring in some high-priced free agents and, and try to win. And, you know, it, this is, as a New York Met, you have to understand that you're on everybody's radar. Everyone wants to play against the best. Everyone wants to play against the team that has spent the most amount of money. So they're going to get everybody's best effort. They will figure it out. They are that good. They have veterans in that dugout. It'll come around just hopefully not while they're here in Cincinnati. Old friend Tommy Pham is back. Now the Mets have a losing record. They're 17 and 18, but they're in second place, seven games back of a darn good Brave squad that's off to a far cleaner start. Check swing, look good. Ball two. I think he held up. I yeah. just think it was a strike. Shallow right. Myers coming on hard. Weaves underneath and makes the catch. So here's the rookie, Brett Beatty. Solid effort for the 23 year old, who's third among rookies in average, just outside the top five and out of base at OPS. Weaver focusing down. Through just nine pitches in that one two three opening inning. His counterpart David Peterson labored with twenty eight only half strikes. Tapped Weaver. The stumbling grab and the artful exchange and backflip. After you let that ball go, you're an infielder. And Weaver is showing some athleticism there. And what I love about it is there's no panic. After he catches that ball, takes his time, steps to the throw with the shovel to first base. Athlete. Oh, an exhale moment. A Starling Marte is the Met most familiar with Weaver. He's five for twelve against him, a 417 average. He has not had a very good year outside of stolen bases, and he's been particularly prone against right-handed pitching, a 177 average. Bunt kicks foul. 
And Mark, it's very likely in these coming days, steals could be a factor. The Mets steal at a very high success rate, and Marte is their best in volume. While they do not contain the run game very well. Opponents are 30 for 32 trying to steal against the Mets this year. Oh, two. Twisting foul down the right field line. Dropped on the first bare hand try. On the left there, fan with the hat off, can't believe it. Oh, and he gets it anyway. What a kind gesture. And the smart move, give it to a kid. <laughs> right through the wickets. <laughs> Struck him out. Weaver smooth at the start. The Mets have issued four walks per game over one and a half homers a game both the third worst marks in the majors. Bottom third for the Reds and a wild miss from Peterson. Kevin Newman hits lefties well. However, he does not have an extra base hit since the 17th of April. 13 games in that time, 10 knocks, all singles. And Peterson continues to live away, trying to nibble at that edge against these right handed hitters. Three and one. Foul ground, Alonzo runs out of room. Down to Triple A. Louisville is facing Columbus. Ellie De La Cruz just hit a double at 118.8 off the bat. That's harder than any ball hit in the big leagues this year. Miss up for a walk. If you're wondering it's Matt Olson to the Braves off the Reds Luis Sessa that monster homer he had was 118.6. Sessa was DFA'd by the Reds today. Well, Newman, not really a base stealer, but he has speed. The left handed Peterson gives a look. The left handed TJ Friedel takes strike one, subject of our Kia player profile. He's knocked in 15 at home this year. That's tied for the most in the National League. He is a talented bunter and Beatty has been on the grass at third since the start of the plate appearance. Jeff McNeil at second base also. On that fake bunt attempt. He was crashing pretty hard. This guy brings so much. To the plate just because of his ability to effectively put the ball on the ground. But to make it happen make things happen and create chaos. Just really shortens up the defense. Gives you so many more holes to be able to hit the ball through. Infancy of the year, Friedel was starting more often against lefties. Rich Hill in the opening series. It's become more rare of late, but he's hit 278 left on left. That's off the glove of a diving McNeil. Right through second. Newman alertly goes to third. Marte strong throw. Tag tardy. Pops up on a safe slide. First to third. Newman. Base hit TJ Freeman.
and I mentioned how Jeff McNeil had to crash a little bit when T.J. Friedel showed the bunt. Well, what it does is takes away a little bit of your range because you have to play a little closer to the hitter, and that little bit of range that you don't have as an infielder allows that base hit right off the end of the glove. Close play at third base. Nice job, T.J. Friedel. That was 103.3 off the bat. Now Luke Maley stands in, hitting 280. Now Friedel does not lead the Reds in steals. That distinction belongs to Jonathan India, who's on deck. But Friedel probably is their best base stealer, specifically with a take of second. Another throw, close play. Friedel back safely. India seems to have an excellent read in the pitch clock era for stealing third. Oh, he's exhausted his disengagements. Finally, the first pitch. And another bad miss, arm side away to a righty. He's now faced all nine in the order. Only one red has seen a first pitch strike. This is going to be a weird zone night, isn't it? One and two. Friedel goes. Pitch misses up. Throw down. Tag. Safe. Very few teams throw in that spot. I'm surprised that Alvarez did. The league is now 20 for 20 trying to steal when Alvarez is catching. Well, a lot of times this is not necessarily on the, the catcher. Alvarez with a high throw down to second base. But you got a six foot six lefty that can't throw over to first base anymore because he had exhausted his disengagements. Friedel took advantage. And Maley fighting off pitches. Peterson's focus has seemed to be just at the top, maybe just above the top of the zone. Down it in, strike three. And three strikeouts for Peterson. Jonathan India in the driver's seat, presented by Hyundai. Just outside of the top five in baseball in OPS at home. Struck out his first time tonight. First time through, what do you think of Peterson? Well, he's kind of been all over the strike zone. It's Bruce Dreckman behind the dish tonight. I don't know if he's kind of established what the strike zone is. If he's a low ball pitcher or a high ball pitcher. We'll be seeing some balls. Seemingly out of the strike zone called a strike. And that's important because a pitcher, depending on what the strike zone is for a particular catch or a particular umpire, will have a tendency when he needs a strikeout to go to that zone where the questionable, pitch, questionable pitches are thrown and called a strike. Roll to third, Beatty. Alonzo with the stretch stays on the bag. 
Break from third. Newman home. Now the Reds tack on a run. It's now 2 0. And that was important contact by Jonathan India. Infield playing back. You just have to hit the ball away, not, not to the pitcher, just make contact. India shortens up, makes contact, drives in the run. Nick Senzel doubled opposite way his first time. Fouled to the seats. Two at one. Friedel singled. Posted his fourth steal in as many tries. It feels like the Reds are seeing his fastball really well. And he's been very careful about throwing it for a strike. The secondary stuff has been more effective, still erratic. Grounded sharply to short, off the backhand level indoor. Friedel given the green light. Canna concedes, bounces a throw to second. Friedel scores, and it's 3 0. Base hit, Nick Senzel. Yeah, this ball was blistered as well to the backhand. You can see that last hop right there. The ball's coming kind of quick, and the ball jumps up right over the glove of Francisco Lindor, who was there as an infielder on a play like that with Senzel, who can run. You're just thinking, keep the ball on the infield. And I believe that was the angle that we saw from Lindor. If he catches that ball, probably doesn't have a chance to throw it to first base. And so you take that deep angle thinking let me just keep the ball in the double play in order. And the ball jumped over his glove. So in the second inning Peterson prepares for his 55th pitch. Spencer Steer grounded out to short his first time. He has thrown just 30 strikes so far. Ball one. Steer has the kind of pop that he could do damage on a mistake. Well outside. Entering tonight eight homers against Peterson in 30 and two thirds innings. That's a lot. Two at one. Three and one. And Peterson was set to start again in Triple A, but Max Scherzer scratched. Had neck issues starting yesterday. And spasms in his neck forced him and the Mets to push him back a few days. Steer is a patient hitter, all the more when you consider he's a rookie. Runner off, fouled back. Mm -hmm. 
Steven Nagosik loosens in the Mets pen. Senzel goes well outside. That's the second walk of the outing and inning for Peterson. Thirty three pitches this inning. Tyler Stevenson RBI single up the middle his first time. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> We are on TV. Barry Larkin's palms both <laughs> got lifted up toward the ceiling. To Beatty. Short way to second. Reds get a couple in. 3 0 lead. Very strong in his faith, and he wants to take that with him to the mound. He's got a cross stitch into his glove. In the middle of the glove, you can see a crown of thorns. And then on the fingers of the glove, most players, if they're going to go with Bible verses, will write the chapter or the book chapter verse. He's got the entire verse written out, stitched into his glove. It's a beautiful glove. And by the way, those wondering, the three are Matthew 1926, Philippians 413, and Corinthians 613. It's a beauty of a glove. That detail, exquisite. The Weaver's been pumping strikes. Strikeouts have punctuated his pair of one, two, three innings. Ogle back fights one off. Joined the Mets in later July last year, acquired through trade from the Pirates. Gave the Mets some much needed pop at the DH spot. They had little. Last year he wound up with 17 homers as a DH that matched Bryce Har Harper's mark for the most in the National League. Hard ground ball, backhand pick steer. Vogelback flips the bat after he's two thirds of the way down. One out. Marcana. Pops up the first pitch out of play. He got hit by pitch a lot last year. 28 times. Led the majors, set the new Mets franchise record. Yeah, there are streaks of different kinds, Lark. He got hit by pitch 14 times in his last 36 games. Pops out to Senzel. Francisco Alvarez. Just 21 years old. He started his year horrendously, one for 15. Weaver just misses. I have that as Weaver's first first pitch ball of the night. 
Well hit to right center. That's going to go. Second home run for Alvarez. And the Mets on the board. It's 3 1. It looked like Weaver went back to that fastball on the outside part of the plate. First pitch to Alvarez was a well located fastball outside. And so, as a hitter, the pitcher just misses. You're thinking, okay, let me hunt that same area because he missed that pitch that he wanted to make for a strike. Alvarez all over it. Weaver works the top of the zone, strike one on Nimmo. Quickly 0 and 2. Well, that's now six homers allowed for Weaver in just 18 and two thirds innings. Weaver has, in large chunks, pitched way better than his composite numbers. But he has had one bad inning, it seems like, each game, and home runs a big part of it. And as any reliever can quickly tell you, one bad inning can change your numbers pretty significantly. Yeah, this is an important hitter for Weaver. You got the heart of the lineup coming up, and you don't want to give them a chance to build on what was started by Alvarez in the home run. Hard ground ball to short. Newman clean field. Damage minimized. The two out solo shot. If a Reds homer hits the Toyota hit and win sign during the game, Venus Weaver from Hamilton, Ohio, will win the brand new built in the USA 2023 Tundra on display here at the ballpark. Register for your chance to win at your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. Another first pitch ball from David Peterson. He fell behind Fairchild 3 0, lost him to a single. Sky to medium left center. Nimmo the call and the catch. So Lark you're facing a pitcher who's not regularly able and or willing to throw strikes only four first pitch strikes he said five three ball counts what are you thinking what's the chatter yeah the mentality is just look for a pitch look for a strike center cut you know don't help him out like that pitch right there don't chase because when he gets behind he's going to have to throw a strike so be patient and when you get that heater over the plate let it eat. First time we've seen that breaking ball. Yeah, that was a good one right there. And that's how you beat that approach. Throw your breaking ball for a strike. But as hitters, what we try to do is we try to eliminate pitches or locations. And if a pitcher is consistently missing, to a particular location or he's consistently missing with a pitch then you can eliminate that pitch or that location and it makes your job a little more simple never easy but definitely a more simple approach to hitting tonight would you eliminate his fastball no never don't ever eliminate the fastball even if he can't throw it for a strike. Tried to check, tipped it, strike three. These are two teams that don't swing a lot, particularly at pitches in the zone. As a team, the Reds swing at the third fewest percentage of pitches 
that are in the zone for strikes in baseball. The only two teams that swing less, the Padres and the Mets. Here's that breaking ball again. High in the air, shallow left. One, two, three for the first time today. Sitting in with the clubhouse guys. He went to social media, posted this. I was gifted this shirt from the Reds clubhouse staff once I got to my 10th year with the club. It's a cherished gift that I'll always keep in love. Each Sunday, I'll throw the shirt on and pretend to clean with our all-star crew. It's our little inside joke. These are my favorite moments. Great people that always make me smile. Thanks, guys. Now, he's referring to a shirt, the clubhouse crew, led by Rick Stowe. The shirts say Red's Clubhouse. They wear them on Sundays. It's a unity thing. And to my knowledge, there's only been a few people outside of that fraternity that have been gifted shirts. Fado, one of them, Bronson Arroyo, another one, and Marty Brenneman, one. Those are the three that I can remember. Now, I could be mistaken, there could be more, but that is an elite fraternity and a very close knit crew. And hopefully, a different kind of uni awaiting Joey Fado sooner than later. Broken bat hit for Lindor. McNeil struck out looking his first time. Popped him up. One out. Alonzo is flying to right. Close. See Lindor look down at his foot. And Weaver almost timed it perfectly. We didn't see it in that replay, but before Weaver threw over, Lindor took his eyes off of Weaver, looked down at his shoe. Close play. Well, Lindor is four for four in stolen base attempts. The Mets second most successful by percentage in the National League. If they go they get their bag eighty four percent of the time. Myers planks a few seats in. Alonzo, a college teammate of Jonathan India. Their days at Florida. In the air to right, Myers underneath. Lindor bluffs a tag. Pretty strong throw in.
Beatty bounced to Weaver, who made a nice play. Two one. Nice pick, Sinzel. Shovels to the covering, Newman. Game benefit concert, June second, presented by the Ohio Lottery. A portion of the proceeds from every ticket will go to fight ALS. Get tickets now. Reds.com slash. Zach Brown band. A corner's crashed, believing bunt from Friedel. Alonzo backs up even more at first. Feels like the greatest tempo Peterson has pitched with today. Full count. Friedel to right, Marte extends and makes the catch. He did not see that cleanly on contact and found a way to track it down. Yeah, it looked like Marte picked it up off the bat, then slowed up. You see that little stutter step, and then had to accelerate and extend. Way up to Bailey, who struck out swinging his first time. That was just another really good at bat by left handed TJ Friedel against a left handed pitcher. That's a baller right there. We Oof. didn't we didn't see it but uh, we didn't show it but. Before the inning started. Frida was coming up to hit and I saw Joey Cora infield coach for the Mets. Telling Alonzo and McNeil hey. Come on in this guy will bunt. I'm telling you it just. I just remember when Billy Hamilton was here. Obviously not the same type of speed but the ability to put the ball on the ground. Launch to center field Nimmo back. Off the wall. Maley clobbers a double to center. Looks like Maley hit this ball a little bit off the end of the bat. But the big fella got extended. 
and it just barely missed going out the ballpark. And some danger there for Nimmo who seemed spun around trying to barehand it at first. Well he got caught very close to that wall because the ball was lofted. And he's thinking maybe he has a play on it. Runs out of real estate and now he's so close to the wall because he's tracking that ball trying to run it down. Normally if you know that ball's off the wall you just turn around and play the carom. But because of the loft of the ball he had to chase it the entire time. Well hit by Indiana left field all the way to the wall. Maley around third he chugs home. Indiana second base a standing RBI double for one Reds. And this is why it's so important for the bottom half of the lineup the bottom third of the lineup to get on base because the fire starter Jonathan India coming up with runners in scoring position is a great proposition here in Cincinnati. Here comes Buck Showalter. He had Nagosik warming earlier in the game, and he is still the man throwing in the bullpen. It's now third time through. Clap of the hands. He asks for the ball. Peterson's gone. Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. Peterson chased 4 1 Reds. Sports Ohio is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by DHL Supply Chain. Now hiring a wide range of salaried managerial and operational roles. Apply today. Join DHL.com. The best boys and girls, the parade of puppies on the first bark at the park of 2023. Into the Mets pen, Steven Nagosik. Four pitch pitcher, 28 year old. He's got the fastball that sits about 93, 94 miles an hour. Cuts the fastball, he's got the slider as well as the changeup. Nick Senzel, a double, an RBI single, a run scored. Showed bunt, yanks it back, ball one. Very pronounced in where he stand when he sets up on the mound. You can see he's always on the third base side of the mound, trying to create a very difficult angle for that right-handed hitter. He only returned from the IL a little more than a week ago. Comebacker in Oakland, April 14th, suffered a bone bruise to his left elbow. Now Sinzel's a hot bat. You don't want to run into an out. You have scoring position. But India's got some really good feel for stealing third. Draws a look. And Sinzel pops it up. Alvarez nearly goes over the padded railing, up the steps. Tyler Stevenson to help him out. He nearly spilled into the camera. He actually hit the camera pretty hard here John. But he nearly goes all the way over. That's about as close as you can come without spilling into the camera well. A lot of times on pop ups you'll see the catcher kind of throw his head or his mask out of the way so he can clearly see that ball. Thank goodness Alvarez did not throw that helmet away because you can see he did make contact. With that camera. Catcher okay, camera okay, operator okay, Eric Seaver doing well. We got you. Okay. 
We once saved Todd Frazier from going over the railing one day. I believe it was in St. Louis. He was going completely over, and me and another photographer was able to keep him from going. It's a dangerous, it's a dangerous thing. On this occasion, you were, you were out of the picture, though. Yeah, I was hiding. Yeah. No, I could. I would have helped. If, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a little back here. <laughs> But had I been up in the front row, right, right, and helped him out. In the dirt, nice block by Alvarez. Alvarez knows. This is a great at bat by Sinzel. This will be the eighth pitch of the plate appearance. Strike three. That's that pitch that the hitters are questioning. Looks like it might have caught the strike zone. Alvarez does a nice job of framing bringing it back into the strike zone. But as a hitter that's that's the that's the area where you're questioning whether or not it's consistently a strike or not. I mean there have been several called tonight. Another yep. almost half foot off the plate compared to that. Yep. And you get the um, or the umpire sitting in the slot. That's the area between the catcher and the hitter. For a right handed hitter, he's down the third baseline, and on the four left, he's up the first baseline. And so it's, you don't really get a great angle. You can't really see that outside corner because you're in there protecting yourself, which is understandable. Huge lead for India. Strike. <laughs> Now you understand what I'm saying, right? I get it. There have been half a dozen pitches called tonight yes. that are not strikes. Yeah. There have been a few for Weaver, too. But Peterson was living in that spot away to righties. Two, two. That pitch has sometimes been a strike tonight. And that's a that's got to be a weird calculus for a hitter. I know that's not a strike. But with two strikes that could be strike three. Exactly. India went nearly halfway. That's way in. All right let's take a look. Different angle. Where's Jim Day? <laughs> that I'm facial going, expression. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm trying to stretch. I got the tongue out like Michael Jordan. It's a big play. See now there's Jorge Merlos. Yeah, He's Jorge was right in it. Jorge was all over play. it. Jorge's got it. He's got it under control. There he goes, yeah. Stevenson. RBI single for Stevenson tonight. A third inning aside, the other three have been very noisy for the Reds' offense. Runs in each of the other three. Yet it it feels like the red should be up more than three right now. They left two in scoring position in the first. They left two one in scoring position in the second. Two on here. Cranked foul. 
Ellie De La Cruz has done it again, by the way. A home run at nearly 117 off the bat. That was lefty. His double at nearly 119 off the bat was righty. Since 2015, when they started tracking with StatCast, only Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge have multiple balls hit that hard in a single game. And those are the two most consistent hardball hitters in baseball. De La Cruz matched him tonight. Yeah. Special, special talent. O2 again. Down. I saw a young men in the stands today with an Ellie De La Cruz jersey, number 44. On. Pretty cool. He started his year one for 21. Remember, was hurt in spring training, was out the first couple of weeks in AAA. Since then, 373, slugging 725. That's pretty nuts. I was down in Louisville when he first, when he made his debut. And, you know, it was a struggle for him. It wasn't a struggle. He was just getting beat. But he was steadfast in his confidence and just part of the game and this is why because he knows he has now been dominating for over 50 plate appearances and that's not to say there aren't other flaws that he can grow defensively the strikeouts are still higher than you would like he doesn't walk a lot but you know what if you can hit for high average and crazy power and run like nuts I think he can live with that. Just goes out to Matt McClain, International League Player of the Week, 440 average, hit for that cycle, second of his young pro career. And Noel V. Marte, who was one of the centerpieces in that trade with the Mariners, got up to a very slow start at Double A, but Southern League Player of the Week, 417 average, had a two-run walk-off home run to boot. Well, congratulations to both of those outstanding young talents. Marte struck out his first time. That's Starling Marte. The Welvy Marte has been hitting now for about 10 games. He's been far more productive. Big body kid. Probably profiles more as a third baseman. Nice glove on an in-between hop by Steer. No athleticism and footwork at first base for Spencer Steer sees that big hop. Don't want to get caught in between, so he just steps through it and plays the short hop. Easy peasy, no problem. Nice play. That's a big old glove over there. A lot of room for error. Also sporting a Pretty nice mustache. Yes, he is. Newman backhand. Can he recover from the outfield grass? Got it. Kevin Newman steps back on this ball right here. The problem he plays it. Look where his glove is relative to his body. Too close. You got to give yourself space. And Daniel Vogelbach not blistering down the line. Able to come up with the throw in the out. Canada down 0 2. He has popped to third.
Popped him up again. India the call. That is a third one two three inning for Weaver. On Reds Live, Nick Senzel has more than one hit. He's got a couple. Spencer Steer without a total base just yet. Pete Alonso has not yet hit a home run. But Ellie De La Cruz just went deep again. His second homer of the game, 117.1 off the bat. He is three for three, double two bombs, all three hits, 116 plus off the bat. No big leaguer has ever done that three in one game that destroyed one question who is pitching for the opposition and are they trying no, Ellie is certainly a, a super talent that's amazing fair child to right Marte Backs up to the wall, hops up, and he makes the catch. <laughs> Philip Deal, man of Moeller, former Red, gave up the last home run. Luis Oviedo gave up the other homer. He was with the Pirates in the big leagues. Swinging bunt shipped to third. Barehand play. Nagosik has to eat it. Infield knock for Myers. It's good to be good, and it is great to be lucky right there. Take 200 of those every single year. Yeah, if you could hit 200 of those, that'd be pretty good. At the knees on Newman, strike one. The double came off Adam Scott, who is a prospect for the Guardians. Sometimes when you're in such a groove as Ellie De La Cruz seems to be in, it doesn't make a difference who's pitching. You know, the whole key is about being in position to hit. And I think great players, great talents. Runner goes, fisted, ground ball off the glove of Lindor as Meyer slid in. Safe arrival at second. Newman down to first. And here comes Buck Showalter. See Lindor tries to hold the bag. And I think what Lindor is talking about is the hand. Look at the hand of Will Myers. It interferes with Lindor actually catching the ball. Look at this. He put his hand in front of the glove. And I don't know if he did that. On purpose, or if it was just part of his swing or, or, or of his slide. But I think that's what Lindor's gripe is. I, I honestly don't think he did that intentionally to disrupt. It, it felt like he was trying to protect himself, knowing where Lindor was and having a sense of where that ball was coming. But I can also understand the gripe of Buck Showalter because his hand goes up and. Makes physical contact with the glove. The umpires have heard Showalter's case. They're going to conference. Watch his right hand right here. I don't know. It looks like he actually looks at the ball. If we can get a replay of that, we go back from that other angle. It looks like Will Myers slows up a little bit, kind of assesses the situation. You see that right there? It's like he was looking at the ball and then maybe saw Lindor's glove. 
That'd be interesting to see if he did it purposely. It, it makes me think of Yankees Red Sox 04. It was Bronson Arroyo versus Alex Rodriguez. Now that was grossly egregious. A Rod, I think, very clearly was trying to knock the ball out of his glove. And Showalter's been tossed. And I think that tells us all we need to know about Myers being safe. Now, is he talking about four sets of eyes? You had four different umpires that could look at the play. This is where having somebody mic'd would really help because what I'm going to assume is that they're saying we didn't see it. So Showalter is gone. Eric Chavez is the Mets bench coach. He scored a single for Newman. Now it's two on for T.J. Friedel with one out. Ball one. Friedel to right center. That gets down. Gathered on the track by Nemo. Around third, Myers. He comes home. Newman sent home. Through to the plate. It gets by. Friedel turns, slams on the brakes. He drives in two. Six one Reds. TJ Friedel just making it happen. He's a triples machine. Perfectly splits that gap. And with Kevin Newman on first base, who was really picking it up, you know there might be a play at the plate. So you are putting your head down, running the third base. Good throw, maybe bang, bang. But putting pressure on the defense. The fire from Friedel. In a ballpark where it's really tough to triple. That's his third triple of the year, his second of this homestand. All three triples have come at Great American Ballpark. Against the Cubs on the 3rd of April, against the White Sox just three days ago, now the infield in for Luke Maley. And to go sick Dotson, strike one. Oh, and he hit him. David Bell comes out, athletic trainer Tomas Vera right behind him. Bailey, one of the Reds' three catchers. Kirk Casale is on the bench today as Tomas Vera looks at that left thumb. Asks him to tense it. 
Seems like he's okay. It's a tough man. So four straight Reds have reached base. Two are in, first and third. The infield had been shallow. It's now double play depth with Jonathan India standing in. Buck Showalter, his first ejection in this, his second season with the Mets, his first in a Mets uni, 34th of his big league career. Well, one. Two ribbies for India today. One on a ground out, the last on a double. Floats away. Three and oh. Strike one. High in the air, center field. Friedel's got speed. He shapes up at third. Catch made by Nimmo. Tagged by Friedel. Throw goes to third. Friedel scores. Sack fly RBI, 7-1. Why throw to third? Maybe he was thinking that there was not going to be a play. He wasn't going to be able to throw him out at the plate. And so maybe he was throwing the third. To maybe he tagged up early. I, I don't know. I could understand the throw in the second base. Right. Third base. Strike one on Sinzel, two for three. A double, an RBI, a run scored. Oh and two. The Reds have seven runs on ten hits. Strike three cold. Senzel down looking a three spot in the inning for the Reds and a three base hit by Friedel drives in two of them. Klosterman to Bakery. Out of May 21st, the Reds wrap up their series against the Yankees. Fans in attendance receive a Reds poster thanks to PNC while supplies last. First pitch strike to Francisco Alvarez, whose homer makes for the only Mets run. Now, Luke Weaver only started once last year. But he hasn't had a quality start since September of 2021. Well hit to left. Alvarez again. He's got two of the team's three hits, and they've both left the yard. Yeah, this time it was a not well located changeup. Alvarez first home run is on the fastball. Notice the location of the changeup. High changeups go a long way. First multi-homer game of his young career. 
remember he didn't debut until the last of September last season. But after a one for 15 start he's chasing less and he's hitting with far more contact and power. That's why you have to give young players time. Can't expect these young guys to come up here at the best level of baseball in the world and be exactly what the finished product that they're eventually going to be. You got to be patient with them. You got to give them a chance. They have to fail. The only way you can know what to do and how to get it done is to fail. In between ball near collision and an artful slide by Fairchild allowing Newman to go over the top and make the play. Really great communication right here on infield outfield communication. Detail, pay attention to detail. Infielders are told when you go for a ball to the outfield, if you're going to fall, fall high. Outfielders are told to go low. So you see how Newman goes high, Fairchild goes low. We're able to avoid the collision. Pop fly Lindor. Newman. McNeil is struck out looking. He has popped to second. Ball one. Perfectly positioned India. A one, two, three finish on the infield after the home run. Authority of the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Reds. Reds up big 7 2 advantage home sixth on a sparkling day by the mighty Ohio the Mets plunge deeper into their pen the latest to the fray is Jeff Brigham 31 year old right hander three pitchers throws the fastball and sits about 92 93 miles an hour as a slider and then he'll cut the fastball. Originally a fourth round pick by the Dodgers. He was part of a giant 13 man trade that included the Braves, Marlins, and Dodgers. Near the deadline 2015, went into the Marlins organization. Mets picked him up via trade in November. Ball one to Spencer Steer. He's walked his last two times also a ground ball out to short. Oh boy. I don't know what's a strike tonight Lark. Can you tell me you're not the only one. Time for steer. Way outside, and Brigham seemed to stumble a bit.
David Peterson at the start had some rather wild moments. Including a very elevated pitch while Myers was batting first inning that gave Stevenson and Fairchild third and second respectively. There's another walk for Steer. Brief word now from Miami Valley Gaming. Shimmy on down and get ready to get lucky at Miami Valley Gaming. Awesome. You know that plays because he just did a shimmy on down to first base. <laughs> <laughs> the smile on your face when the dance is done. It's worth it. You got some moves. <laughs> but I was looking past you today. <laughs> I was looking at Joel. Joel was getting it today. I mean, he actually almost got up out of his seat and start doing the robot. There it is right there. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> Joe was killing it, <laughs> killing it. That was great. <laughs> we love you, Joel. Yes. Don't stop dancing. Yes. Dance like no one's watching, even though they yes. may show it to all your friends and family on TV. <laughs> no one, no one will see that, Joel. Promise. <laughs> Not a soul will see that. <laughs> I mean, getting it. Two and two. <laughs> oh boy. We need more music related spots. Get different rhythms going. Yeah, I mean the sponsors they uh, they see how we kind of react to that catchy music. Come on now. We can dance we could dance every sponsor spot. We could be dancing up here. It's hard to beat a good jingle. It really is. Runner goes 3 2, down and away. A call to strike, throw down. Got him. That's a strike him out, throw him out. Stevenson in stunned disbelief. That looked like ball four. That winds up being the first caught stealing of the year for Francisco Alvarez with great assist to the ball strike call. Mm. I mean that's close but it shouldn't matter it should have been ball four. Oh and one on Fairchild who is singled he has fly down twice. We were on such a high from Joel's dance moves. Yes. The game has a way of humbling you, John. It does. But we must continue to dance. That's, we must. Yeah, that's not going away. You can see the electric exclamations from Brigham on these misses. Struck him out. Dance on, Joel. Dance on. Baby Club memberships are available. Each include exclusive merchandise, free Reds tickets, special members only experiences. Purchase today, Reds.com slash fan clubs. First pitch strike, Luke Weaver to Pete Alonzo. 
who was flied to right twice. Park in the park night. That's lucky in my lap at school drop off most mornings. That's Alonzo to right. Myers won't get there. 12 home runs for Pete Alonzo. He's the first in the National League to 30 RBIs. The man is a monster hitter. He is a monster hitter, and it's about him. If he is able to get his arms extended, and look at this. That's called extension. The big man does not have to pull the ball. He's got big time pop every single place in the ballpark. When he extends his arms, gets the ball elevated. That's over. Derek Law warms in the Reds pen. Adam Ottavino is getting ready in the Mets pen. Beatty's 0 for 2. Fouls off strike one. So four hits, three of them solo homers. Weaver is still mighty efficient. That was only his 80th pitch. He hasn't gone seven innings since he dominated the Reds 11th of April 2021. He went seven scoreless on one hit that day and struck out eight. He was at the time a Diamondback. And right after the homer, a walk. That's the first of the day for Weaver. So that is now eight homers surrendered, surrendered by Weaver in 22 innings on the year. David Bell up the steps as Marte prepared to stand in. And Bell arrives on the mound and makes the move. The Weaver goes six plus a couple of men. The book's still open. Derek Law gets the call. bets on your first five dollar bet download the FanDuel app make every moment more well, Luke Weaver is done he's in line for the win and this is his best start as a red well gave up three home runs but nothing in front of those home runs and certainly frustrated down there but he pitched exceptionally well I thought he did a nice job of spotting his fastball his pitch his fastball changeup mix was great. We saw some good sliders. Very positive positive signs. Nice outing. Derek Law continued to do the things that he's been doing recently. Has not allowed his hit in his last three appearances. Been really good last time we saw him against the White Sox. Two and a third innings and was dominant. Facing Starling Marte elicit swing and miss. Fouled away. He pitched behind Nick Lodolo in that outing against the White Sox. That was the Reds' lone win in that series. Stranded two inherited runners. Worked around a walk with a double play. 
nice backhand pick by Maley. Remember, he was hit by pitch right around the thumb area on the hand. Big lead for Beatty. Weakly tapped right side. Backhand steer. Pitcher cover. Foot raise. Loses the ball. And missed the bag. Marte safe. Beatty up to second. Yeah, that's a tough play right there. Kind of an in between hop. You got Spencer Steer who has to decide first of all is that pitcher going to come get that ball? You see the slight hesitation. And now he's not in position to throw the ball to second base nor to first base. And just tried to lead lead that pitcher and you could see Derek Law taking his eye off the ball to try to find the bag that's just that that's just a tough play right there. Base hit. First pitch to Vogel back breaking ball down. He is grounded out twice. Vogel back walks a lot. An 18 percent walk rate. This year and last is a net. 2 0. Oh. He's a capable hitter, but he also has a lot of patience. Strike one. Two and two, speared by a red over the rail. Alex Young is up in the Reds' pen. Sharply fouled. This is the Mets first chance with a man in scoring position on the night. Three of the first four hits were homers. Lindor began the fourth with a broken bat single three straight outs followed. The only walk came after the homer by Alonzo. And before Marte's infield hit. Full count. With Showalter ejected, Canna is on deck. Interesting to see what may happen if Vogelback reaches here. Canna has been putrid with men in scoring position, hitting 190. He's on, bases loaded. Pitching coach Derek Johnson comes out. Brief word now from Fiesel. Weather got you worried? Fiesel has you covered. Visit FieselLink.com today for $1,000 off a purpose-built roof. Beatty is Weaver's responsibility at third. 
Reds haven't had a win by a starter since April 28th. Grounded to short, double play ball, second one, India to first. Got him, double play. Now the lead runner, Beatty, comes home over to third, Marte, but the Reds will take that trade up three with two outs. Yeah, this is exactly what you want. You want that routine ground ball double play, and that's exactly what you get. Newman perfectly positioned to Jonathan India to Spencer Steer. Trade the outs. For the run. So here comes Alvarez, the Mets' number one prospect. Getting a chance in large part because Omar Narvaez has been on the IL since the 5th of April. Another excellent pick by Mayu. His two home runs are StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. First home run on a fastball out over the plate, and then the second to bomb on a breaking ball. He has covered the plate very well. Tried to check. Appeal confirms the obvious strike one. He is big pop. MLB pipeline. On the scouting scale, gave his power a 70. Sword strike two. That's on a scale that goes to 80. What's a guy with 70 power? Yeah, that's uh, that's like all-star, major league all-star power. 80 is Hall of Fame power. 70 is perennial all-star. This guy's going to dominate with the bat power. Bounces to India. Damage minimized. Count the largest selection of authentic caps, t shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with the Cincinnati Reds, MLB Shop.com. 7-4 the Reds lead bottom seven Myers Newman and Friedel do up and they will face Adam Adovino 37 year old a veteran numbers on the season four pitches throws the fastball slider it's got a cutter and a change up. Meyer squares to bunt, yanks it back, ball one. Infield hit his last time. Two zero. Bunt yank back. Clips for a strike. Adovino from New York had time with the Yankees a few years ago. Boston thereafter. It's now his second season with the Mets. Beatty backs up. What a way. Kevin Newman has walked, reached on infield hit, scored a couple of runs. Oh, no. That sounded like contact off the lumber that was resting just behind Newman's head.
He dropped it down right above the handle. David Bell might want to challenge. He will not. Bell emerged up the steps and stood on the warning track and both palms raised. Wondering if perhaps it had grazed the forearm. He was just trying to get clarification on the call. Bruce Dreckman just didn't make a definitive call, so they were unknown what he called, if he called that a foul ball or not. That always helps. When in doubt tonight, it's probably a strike. <laughs> As a Met, Adovino has limited base runners very well. Time called for Newman. Last year he had a sub one whip. That's walks plus hits divided by innings pitched. If you're sub one, that's excellent. To right carries to Marte. Brief word now from the folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hey, Cincinnati fans, get all you need for spring for less at Academy Sports and Outdoors. TJ Friedel. Single, two run triple, a steal, a couple of runs scored. The lone time he was retired, he worked a full count, lined out to right. Got the start with the left handed starter opposing the Reds. And he's an example of a player who came up to the big leagues, didn't quite click. He wasn't terrible, but he wasn't great. He went down. Was down for a couple of months and has come back a different man. Yeah. Alonzo. Pre-game edition, six o'clock on Reds Live. The pregame brought to you by Ray St. Clair. Roofing Verlander versus Green. Now the Reds did make change to the rotation. Green will go tomorrow. They have moved Nick Lodolo back a couple of days. It'll be to be determined for the starter on Thursday. Ashcraft will go on Friday. That guy on the left, Lodolo, will go on Saturday. Nick has been dealing with a bit of a calf issue. Not sure if that's why they moved him back, but that's your change in the Reds rotation. We'll have to wait and see who starts on Thursday. Well, thank you, Jim. First pitch for Alex Young out of the gate. Plunks Brandon Nimmo. Lucas Sims is now up loosening behind Young. Switch hitting Lindor bats right. Takes ball one. By rule he has to face three. That includes McNeil on deck. I cannot see a scenario where he would face Pete Alonso. Who follows McNeil. The door broken bat single on a one for three nine. Lindor has produced extra base hits. He's produced RBIs, Lark, but the average is down in a pronounced manner. Yeah, I think this is indicative of what's going on with this team as a whole. You know, the thing is. 
you're a good hitter. You're going to figure it out. Your numbers at the end of the year, they're going to be there. Him as well as the rest of the team. And you can see when he hits them, he's hitting them for extra bases. He's a lifetime 275 hitter. This year hitting 220. Nubbed foul. Now he has hit the Reds very well lifetime. A lot of those head to head meetings came with Cleveland. Two two. Blasted to left. That's his 10th career homer against the Reds. He goes second deck and it's a one run game. Just a fastball up in his eyes. And that is one pitch that Lindor feasts on. Big time pop. Now the Reds still have the lead. McNeil stands in 0 for 3. Fouls off strike one. For Alex Younglark, through April, 10 outings, 11 innings, one run. A 0.82 ERA. In May, he has now allowed a homer in three of his four appearances, six runs, excuse me, five runs in three innings. I assume it's just a matter of just getting a little loose with the mechanics, the pitch location, not quite where it needs to be. You know, just like hitters, every pitcher goes through a little time where they don't have their good stuff. Question is, like, how do you compete when you don't have your great stuff? And he's got to be careful here. He's had excellent strikeout to walk numbers on the year. You put McNeil on, the top run producer in the National League is on deck. Lifted to left. Fairchild makes the play. There's the first out of the inning. And David Bell immediately ascends the steps. We're going to see the biggest test for 2023 Lucas Sims. Bell makes the move in a one run game. Sims gets the call. Bases empty, one out. Lucas Sims in. Really good numbers on the year since he's been back from the injured list. He has not allowed a run in his eight appearances. You see that zero ERA. And he didn't allow a hit in any of his last six appearances. He has been really, really good. Obviously, this high leverage situation easing him back into it. Facing Pete Alonso. Ball one. Alonso went deep. His team leading 12th. The first of the National League to 30 RBIs. Frozen on that pitch. Strike one. That's that front front door breaking ball a slider. So the reaction normally you see a fastball in the inside corner. But the ability to throw it for a strike. Right at the hip of that hitter. Get that reaction.
Alonzo matched the Dodgers Max Muncie for the most home runs in baseball this year. Up and in. He walks. Tying run is on. Those were some really good pitches that Lucas Sims threw. And Pete Alonzo just showing the patience. That was a great at bat. You know, many times you got to rally. You're the big man in the lineup. You say, I'm going to get this done. So you extend the strike zone and expand the strike zone and swing at some balls. But not Pete Alonzo right there. Good at bat. Brett Beatty. An aggressive fastball to the rookie. Strike one for Sims. Beatty has walked and scored, robbed by the pitcher Weaver on a nice play. And he's bounced into a force fielder's choice. <laughs> 0 and 2. The Reds led this game 7 to 1. This feels a lot. Like the mid July game a couple of years ago. And the Mets had seven homers. Reds lost at 11 in a wild softball game, 15 to 11. They combined for 34 hits in that game. This is not a little over halfway to that point. Chip to left, Fairchild has it red, makes the catch. Two outs. Alexis Diaz now warms in the Reds pen. Starling Marte, base hit on the infield, he's one for three. Outstanding first pitch strike. Check swing seemed to go. Yes, on appeal to first. Alonzo, a well below average runner at first base. Sims changing it up. Center field. Friedel coming on. Alonzo shuts it down at second. Marte's two for four. There's that slider on the inside part of the plate. Just stays over the plate. Marte with the presence and the patience. And here comes David Bell. Alexis Diaz by now is loose. The tying run is in scoring position. And he makes the move. So Sims only retires one man. He allows a walk and a hit. Diaz to the mound, trying to shield a one run advantage. Six, two on, two out, eighth inning, Alexis Diaz. Nothing but really good things to say about these relievers recently, pitching very, very well. Alexis has a 10 game scoreless streak. He's been exceptional. 
out of the bullpen. He is the brother of Mets All Star closer Edwin Diaz, who just this week walked under his own power to receive his National League Reliever of the Year award. Alexis Diaz has not gotten more than three outs in an appearance this year. He's on in the eighth. Great looking pitch called ball one. On a night where everything is a strike, how is this not a strike? Hmm. Two and oh. Now remember, the lead runner is Pete Alonso. Who's only in the 15th percentile. 15th lowest in sprint speed. He is not automatic to score on a base hit. Three and oh. Strike one. Joey Cora he is the Mets third base coach. He stands outside of the box angled watching the outfielders. Full count Alonzo scurried back to an unoccupied by a defender second. Ball four. Bases loaded. And here comes the bench move. Remember, Buck Showalter had been tossed. So bench coach Eric Chavez has made the call that Luis Guillorme come to the plate to pinch hit for Marcana. Yorme is known for his grinding at bats, including an all timer in spring training a few years ago. That's when he saw 22 pitches against the Cardinals' Jordan Hicks. Takes a slider strike. Diaz away. Diaz a strike away from preserving the lead. Check swing. Did he go? Yes! Appeal says strike three, and they leave him loaded. Eighteen mile per hour exit velo double and then a 456 home run lefty and righty now he's a switch hitter so him hitting one righty is a big deal but on fire nine game hitting streak five tools and you're seeing one of them right there he right now is at the plate bases loaded two out they're tied in the ninth. 
could another big Ellie moment happen. Moving parts here. Jake Fraley pinch hits facing new pitcher Drew Smith. For a pitch pitcher and Drew Smith. A couple fastballs you saw right there. It's about 95 miles an hour. He's got a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. Numbers on the season been really good. Not giving up a lot of hits. On his career, Homer's a big concern. Misses with a fastball. His last two years, Lark, 16 bombs in just 87 and one third innings. That's a lot of home runs. Jeff McNeil is now at left. Yorme stays in the game at second. Early turn foul. You saw, like, you saw that curveball right there. I think one thing with makes Drew Smith so good is the fact that he throws 95 96 but his curveball is 20 mile an hour less floats it up there about 75 miles an hour. That's tough to cover. Giving up the body looking for the ball. <laughs> A for effort. <laughs> Full count. The last couple of years, he is second best in baseball. OPS is a pinch hitter. Goes down on strikes. Ellie De La Cruz walked with two outs, bases loaded, and Louisville won a walk off on a walk. That's significant. Yes. Because this guy is a true free swinger. So to be able to have the discipline to lay off with the bases loaded for the win. What a day. Couple bombs. Double. 116, 118, whatever. And then a walk off RBI. Game winner. Good for him. And that's an excellent sign because the physical skills are well chronicled and well known. The yes. guy can run, he can hit for huge power. He walked to win the game. 3 0. Strike one. Little bit of insurance breathing room would sure help. Full count. First base the hard way. Tomas Vera, athletic trainer out. You know, the John, that pad is still there, or it's there, but that's still. That hurts. That does not feel good. You know, the back of that elbow, there's really not much meat there. My goodness. Do not miss that. He catches up with his former college teammate. Nick Sinzel, a couple of hits, couple of strikeouts looking. Does have an RBI. Early turn foul. 
there is nobody loosening in the Reds pen. Remember Lark the Diaz on the 8th of April tried to get six outs against the Phillies and it did not go well. The first inning he was perfect. He allowed three to reach did not get an out in the ninth. And this is a time of game that if you're a base dealer this is when you want to take the back right now. You know the Reds have talked about you know base stealing and 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 trying to be a little more aggressive. You know put yourself in scoring position right now. This is I would love to see India try to work to steal a base right here. Draws a throw. They uh, they might be listening. It's all right. Could speak in code from now on. That is okay. <laughs> We're going. <laughs> Do something about it. Stop us. Out of the zone. Colin Cowgill was just in India's ear. Noticeable peak from Smith. Way up. Full count on Senzel. He has seen his share of pitches tonight. Center field, Nimmo. Two down. I like that right there. Like to see it happen earlier in the at bat. But that's aggressive. And that this is if you're a stolen, if you steal bases, these are the times of the game and situations where you need to take it upon yourself to put yourself into scoring position. I love the attempt. David Robertson warms in the Mets pen. Breaking ball strike on Steer, who has a career high three walks. You're still thinking, John, you're still thinking, let me get a great jump and steal second base. So that Spencer Steer only has to touch the ball and get a base hit as opposed to hit a double to score me. And getting thrown out is not an issue. It's not a thought. There is no getting thrown out. Not in this part of the game. One two. This is up. Center field, Nimmo. And it. We go to the ninth. Alexis Diaz back out of one.
Bowl on Valley Sports Ohio is brought to you by Jake Sweeney Chevrolet, serving the Tri-State for over 100 years. Few changes for the Reds. Spencer Steer is out of the game. Jake Fraley had hit for the catcher Maley. He stays in at right. They move Will Myers from right to first. And the new catcher hitting in steer spot who made the last out last half inning is Kurt Casale. Francisco Alvarez his first career multi home run game. See strike one from Diaz. Slider gets by appeal no go. Big swing. Now last year Alexis Diaz no stranger to getting four or more outs. He did it 16 times. But he was not the ninth inning guy for most of the year. Hunter Strickland was. Strickland was released by the Reds today. Had a rough go at Triple A. Two two. Strike three called. Nails the slider on the outside edge. Man, what a tough pitch right here. It's kind of got that crossfire for a right-handed hitter. You're thinking out over the plate, but you see that arm angle. And that ball just sweeps across the zone and good night. Lead off man Brandon Nimmo. Fastball strike. <laughs> Misses away. One one right by him yeah. after the game Reds live the post game show from your local Toyota dealers during Diaz's rise as an end game option. He has already had some iconic moments against some of the better bats in the game. Jose Ramirez of Cleveland last year. Juan Soto last road trip in San Diego. On deck is Francisco Lindor. Definitely take it, but frustrating. You can see that ball is off the plate. Kurt Casale does a nice job of pulling it back in. Lindor taps it. Myers to Diaz, bumps it down, and the Reds take the opener. They hold off the Mets seven to six. Credit Alexis Diaz for coming in here and, and slamming the door. 
And this was a team win yet again, John. This is the way that they have to get it done. Luke Weaver giving up some home runs, but really minimizing the damage. Going deep into the game, doing a nice job. The bullpen able to hold on, but the usual suspects with the bat. Jonathan India getting the started. And TJ Friedel yet again coming up with the big hit, driving in a couple runs. Nick Senzel swinging the ball, swinging the bat better. Nice to see Tyler Stevenson hitting the ball a little bit better. Another great team win, and you never know with these guys. They are going to grind it out and play all 27. The win preserved by Alexis Diaz. His resume continues to grow. Post game still to come. Word from David Bell, the clubhouse, and more. BG and Sammy on the other side. Reds roll 7 6.